Ministry of Education in Ontario announcing a $60 million strategy to boost math. Teach math differently, include more than um, just a half hour of math a day, up to an hour a day. So we're paying attention to that because we've seen a bit of a decline in math scores and uh, people are concerned. What's interesting is that we've seen a massive decline in our physical activity among our youth. Um, we talk endlessly about how our youth are you know, gaining too much weight and there's an obesity crisis, et cetera, et cetera. Yet, um, this week, Queen's has uh, decided to suspend their physical education degree and uh, we're finding how less and less schools in the country actually have a phys ed teacher anymore. That's concerning to my next guest, Chris Jones, the executive director and CEO of Physical and Health Education Canada. Chris, welcome. Good morning, Tim. I know you can't compare math and phys ed um, in, in a lot of ways, but in some ways you can. Uh, we, we're spending a lot of time talking about the three R's, yet as we sit back and know that we're gaining weight, we're doing less phys ed, or at least it seems. Mm. Is, that, is that fair to say? Well, it's true that, um, you know, while there isn't a sort of an official policy commitment to every kid getting 20 minutes a day of moderate to vigorous physical activity, in practice that's not observed in perhaps more than the roughly 43% of schools across the country. So many kids are being deprived of that important physical activity um, b because of this focus on math and science and computing and so on. And we think that has significant downsides to their health and well-being. 20 minutes a day, that's the mandate. Th yeah. that, that, does that include recess? Does that include um, uh, lunches, those kinds of things? Or is this um, standalone? Well, I mean, that's a nominal sort of policy commitment, but yeah. some schools in practice, they, they lump in recess, assuming the kids are going to get active there. But we know that in many cases, kids aren't, they stand around a great deal in recess. So only a small number of kids are getting their heart rate up. Um, the numbers of uh, phys ed teachers, and we all, when I was growing up, every school has a, had a phys ed teacher. That doesn't happen as much anymore, does it? Yeah, well, certainly at the elementary level, um, there is no requirement except uh, more or less in Manitoba to have a specialist. So basically you have uh, generalist and homeroom teachers who do an admirable job, who do their best, but who often aren't uh, conversant or well-versed in the teaching of physical education and physical activities. So they're kind of winging it a lot of the time. They just haven't had that grounding. And to that extent, um, they are not able to impart um, the understanding and the insights that allow kids to overcome their motivational deficits, their fear, their anxiety, whatever it is that's stopping them from doing physical activity these days. Is that problem only going to become exacerbated in the future if we don't have trained phys ed teachers moving forward? I would suggest that it is. Uh, there are a lot of factors at play here, um, but certainly the absence of a trained and specialized physical educator and also a requirement to have um, phys ed credits right through high school. I mean, essentially we have, you only need to have in Ontario up to grade nine and then there's no more requirement for that. And, um, I, you know, I think what we're seeing is children succumbing to the allure of the digital world, the screen-based environment, uh, to low nutritional quality food. Um, and, and over time, it's creating a sedentary society with all of the uh, implications for health care and, and so on down the road. So we're quite concerned about it. Queen's isn't the only school to be um, looking seriously at their phys ed degree program, is it? No, no. I mean, I, I, I don't want to, you know, Queen's has taken a decision to pursue a kind of more applied health sciences approach, a focus on biomechanics. Kinesiology. And yeah. kinesiology, yeah. And, and um, you know, that has its place. There is intrinsic value to that, and I'm not going to criticize that. I'm just saying that we think that um, 
institutions of higher education that are mandated to train the next generation of teacher trainers, teacher candidates who are going out into the schools, ought to be furnishing those kids with an element of pedagogy, which is how do you help, uh, how do you help get across the points? How do you teach a, a young person to uh, understand the inhibitions and the reasons why they're not physically active? In other words, mm -hmm. you need to understand the psychosocial factors at work here. It's not just all about body mechanics. I suppose in defense of the universities, though, if there's a drop, a significant drop in the number of people who are entering the program, they financially couldn't keep going, could they? Well, um, uh, you know, there is still a huge need uh, out there in the school system for teachers versed in these techniques of, uh, you know, uh, teaching kids uh, physical literacy, uh, teaching them living skills, teaching them self-reliance. And um, the laboratory-based stuff that a lot of schools have, have turned to in kinesiology, focusing on exercise physiology and so on, uh, the science of that, while important, is, is not going to help kids with their motivational challenges and with their inhibitions. And we, we really feel that, that this is important at this point and that the school system needs to address this deficiency. How much physical activity a day should an elementary or by extension high school student get ideally well ideally you would get an hour a day of what we call MVPA moderate to vigorous physical activity but we, we believe that 30 minutes of phys ed and then another 30 minutes of physical activity possibly either at recess or in the crucial after school time period from about 3 30 to, to, to 6 is a, is a good time to get that other half hour. So, but many, many children are no longer getting that. They're being driven to school. They're immediately heading home to go in front of their screens. And we're seeing the consequences. One of the big problems, Tim, is we're seeing a lot of kids with self-regulation and impulse control issues. They are just not getting enough activity, a lot of boys particularly, to focus, to be prepared to learn in their classrooms. And this is a challenge now for many teachers. What we used to call burning off a little energy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, of, of 60 minutes a day, how many, uh, do you have numbers on how many students or what the percentage is that actually get that right now? Yeah, well, um, according to various uh, studies, such as the Active Healthy Kids Canada report card, roughly only about 10% of kids in the country are getting that at this point. Wow. So it's a very small number. Um, and that has significant consequences. And um, we, you know, we know that childhood and youth health problems morph into adult health dysfunction. And so we want kids to be doing this now and, and learning these virtuous, healthy habits now so they persist into adulthood. And that's not been happening. Another classic case of this pay me now or pay me later. Kind yeah, of thing. and I think the cuts that we've seen are essentially a false economy. I think this idea that if you cut phys ed, which is easy, or you cut music or drama, that somehow, you know, math scores will improve and we'll all be better off, um, you know, for that. But the reality is, um, you know, a knowledge-based economy only functions when people are healthy and active and looking after themselves, looking after each other. And I think that we're losing some of that these days. Uh, and and that's a big concern for us. Thanks so much for being with me th uh, this morning, Chris. Good to talk to you. Yeah, good to talk to you. Thanks. Chris Jones is Executive Director and CEO of Physical Health and Education Canada. It is um, 29 after 8 o'clock at 16.